Um, let's see. Steve says, back in classic SharePoint on my tenant, I was able to ask the search to look for a specific author, and it looks like in modern, my search doesn't allow that. I'm not the tenant admin. I'm wondering two things. First, any chance I can change the local search settings on a specific site to enable to search for created by, modified by? Second, can I write a flow that checks every library in a site for a person who modified or created a document? Do you even imagine that? That's what search does. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there's refiners for that, for created by, modified by, right? Yeah, so their managed properties of author and modified by still exist. Uh, that hasn't changed at all. So if you go up to your search bar, type capital A, U T H O R colon, and then put your name in, it should pull back everything tied to you. So that's yes. the, the first part of it. Well, you look for what's in the graph. I mean, if, if there's anything in the graph, you can go and search, you can query on that, build reporting on a lot of out of the, like what's native, what's you know out of the box versus third party tool versus go build script for yourself. There, I think it just question. looks a little well, different. I think in the classic search um, in SharePoint, it actually had the little um, author option in the refiners, whereas in the new search, you have to know that you can look for that content. So it might just be a training issue of just understanding how the new search works versus how the search, uh, the modern search versus the classic search, just how it looks and how you interact with it a little bit differently. Yeah, and for what it's worth, if you're not sure how to build this KQL, there's a wonderful tool built in SharePoint. You can be, you don't have to be a tenant admin, but you can do it at the site collection level. Go in and build a result source. And when you go to add a result mm -hmm. source, it'll ask you if you want to use the query builder. That is your Rosetta Stone. And you can also, you know, you're asking about a local search settings on a specific site to enable for search. Um, you can restrict your search query to the specific context site you're in. I mean, there's wonderful things you can do with that query builder. I think it's important to note that there's four fields that are always tied to every object in SharePoint. When it was created, when it was modified, who created it, and who modified it last. And you can't change those. You can't go in and say, oh, no, this person created that. And so those should be discoverable with any tool, in my opinion, but they can't so be changed. Answer, they can't be altered. And to answer the, the last part, can I write a flow that checks <laughs> every library? <laughs> I mean, you can, you can. <laughs> it's going to be difficult. Um, but the, the check, you know, the, the get property files, you can do the get property files or get file properties for the author and for the modified by. You can, but it's for one library at a time. So you, you to need slow to slow down your entire environment. Right. There might be an action. There might be a, a flow somewhere that will get the list of libraries in a site, maybe. And if so, then add those into a into an array and then create a, a loop to go through each one of the items in that array to do the get file properties. And in the get file properties, you're looking for the author. And then if you're needing to just make a list of which files are which, then you can make another array. It's going to be a mess. So you search. So you, you search. search. My concern here is that can potentially be a lot of information that's surfacing. Yeah. And for what reason? Because, I mean, if an, someone's been in an organization 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you could be talking about a lot of content. Why are you needing to return all of that? I always have questions of the why. Why do you need to look at us? <laughs> and you only because... can see what they've got on SharePoint, not necessarily your OneDrive or wish they could have it all hidden in there instead. So Be because Kirsty, uh, information is power. I'm surprised you didn't know that. <laughs> I'm going to oh, hoard all that. I'm going to delete okay, it. I'm going to download it all and then delete it all out there. And I will have that. I know. Yeah. So, oh, no, Kirsty, that's if they're being transparent. <laughs> but think about this from a more nefarious perspective. You have someone that angrily leaves the company and you want to know yeah. 
what files did that person touch in this library in our security files or our safety documents or our legal briefs or our SOPs? What did they touch in the last 30 days? That that might be a really good search to have. Yeah. Or you have a person who died who has been at the company for 35 years and you need you don't have any idea all of the things that they've done because they've been at the company for 35 years. And what are they working on right now? What are the things that haven't made it into reports yet that they've been working on? And I need to find all of those files. But I mean, you can do that very simply through SharePoint SharePoint search. I mean, SharePoint search in general allows you to be able to search based on a person and it'll bring up all of the files and you can then do a search based on dates in the last 30 days. Like, you know, in its rawest form, I can't see why, I suppose if you're going to, I need everything. I just ask, that's why I question just everything. Oh. Yeah. Ooh, Are you should wanting we to use grab Delve? all of their information? Yeah, well, this is the thing. Don't we know, use the D Delve, word. Of course, is, yeah, yeah, man, you know, being deprecating. Um, <laughs> that's because new solutions are coming to play and the likes of Copilot coming to play. But Copilot only returns so many results right now. So, mm. Well, you, I mean, the, the, it's there. Again, the data is captured by the graph. It's accessible. You can go and find it. That's why you can go in, put a legal hold, did the search through. Like, you can find mm. that information. Somebody passes mm. away. Somebody leaves and, and the the maybe they there was some kind of internal espionage before they they left and they pulled a bunch of content i mean you do you leave that footprint you can go and track the modified the activity around that through the logs there are tools to do that there are third party tools to help you go and do that you know, you i always a pretty solid job with it yeah, it, yeah. It, there's a uh, you know again it, it it comes back to what what are you trying to go and customize and do versus what's the native experience to go and and do that like can you go can you change the local search settings modify that and that experience like yeah you can change that and how it brings that back um you can create uh, power automate that goes and checks that i would reduce the scope of that what it's going and querying and pulling back but but yeah you can go and do those things knowing is half the battle gi joe gi joe <laughs> <laughs> I added in two, a couple things in the resources and it'll be in the article, but, um, I, there's, I've seen or a presentation, uh, yeah, or ask Agnes, you know, uh, Molnar, fellow MVP, like all search questions go to Agnes, I or think Mikhail. Microsoft, when Microsoft has questions about search, they reach out to Agnes, <laughs> but there's also, uh, an, an article out there. So I've seen, I sat through a presentation years ago talking about, um, and the, the article is differences between the classic and modern search experiences and SharePoint. So provide that link and it has, it's a, it's kind of a, a, you know, front end to a lot of other links to, to go and do deeper research if you are interested in that. Um, but yeah, go and understand the differences depending on the version of SharePoint you're talking about. Because knowing is half the battle. <laughs> <laughs>